Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, I'm Zhao Chengdu. I'm from Neuralx Lab, and uh, this work is uh, cooperated with Tsinghua University, and its name is LICS, Selecting Quadratic Facial Crosses with Linear Complexity. This is uh, the applied uh, job in Huawei uh, advertisement platform, and now I will describe it. Uh, so first, uh, I will describe our motivation. So what is the background? So what is the feature cross or feature interaction? Uh, basically, it's a cut same product of two feature sets. For example, if you have a feature named the location and another one named the occupation, then the cross feature would be the all possible like combination of these two features uh, as described in the in the in the in the right part of this uh, this this, this, this uh, purple part. So uh, why it is important for recommender system? Because recommendation is all about uh, user item interaction. So many previous models like FM, DPFM, or DCN using the uh, feature interaction. Uh, but this this method they they, they pre assume some uh, like uh, uh, feature cross uh, 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 pre preliminary assumption. For example, they use the inner product or outer product. So the best way to use it is uh, uh, we, we we combine it and input it into the the input the, the input layer of this network and let the neural let the neural network learn uh, how to uh, do the nonlinear transformation. Uh, but oh sorry. This is wrong. Yeah, uh, uh, but the feature cross number increases quadratically with uh, the, the the single feature number. Uh, if we want to use all features in online, it will cause extremely high latency. Uh, and the traditional feature selection method they cannot scale well with the cross feature number. Uh, for example, the uh, if we use the the the, the traditional like uh, Pearson um, Pearson correlation or use the auto field proposed two years ago, then you need to uh, construct all possible feature crosses uh, on your Disk, then you can do a selection. And some other uh, interaction attribution methods like arc attributes, they need to like do uh, uh, n square times of evaluation. Uh, this is also very very time consuming. And some like uh, dust based method, uh, they assume this weight um, can indicate the final feature importance and with, uh, with regard regardless of the following nonlinear transformation. And this is maybe uh, like uh, cannot con con uh, cannot uh, consider all nonlinear transformations of neural network. Uh, and, and also, no previous method taking feature crosses redundancy uh, with the two single features into consideration. Uh, see, uh, there is a difference between single feature selection and the cross feature selection uh, because single feature feature maybe they, they don't have much uh, information redundancy, but uh, cross features uh, otherwise uh, they are uh, composited by the two single features, so there are a lot of redundancy. So uh, for these two challenges, we propose our method. Uh, so uh, first, how to mathematically define feature cross imp importance? Uh, here is our definition. Important, uh, importance as loss degradation after removing this feature cross in the pre-trained neural network. For example, uh, in the colorful one, we have the EI and EJ features. They exist in this neural network, and they have a loss. The loss is low because we have this information. But when we remove it, these this, this, this neurons become gray. Then, then the loss will increase. And this this distance is our feature importance. If this is if this distance is this high, then this feature cross provide much information. Uh, otherwise, they may uh, contain uh, non information. But if we use this formula and uh, estimating all feature crosses. Uh, uh, like using this uh, this minus operation, uh, this is very time consuming. You have to mask all possible feature crosses, then compute the loss difference. Uh, so can we do better? Uh, yeah, yeah, using approximation. That's our uh, the, the, the core contribution. Uh, this is also the, where the part we, we call it light CS. Uh, yeah. So the first approximation we use is using the uh, the second order Taylor expansion. Uh, this is uh, the, the formula is uh, described uh, in. in, in uh, uh, under here. Um, and uh, uh, if we treat it as like a quadratic function and uh, uh, and only uh, con consider the interaction term of this uh, uh, of this uh, second, tele tele uh, second order tele expansion, then we can get this formula. This formula basically is this one is the Haitian matrix of the loss uh, with regard to our two uh, cross features. And the delta U EI and delta EG is uh, the the, the feature embedding when they are informative and uh, uh, and, and the difference uh, with uh, when it's non-informative. Basically, we can use the weight itself because non-informative can be treated as zero. So 
We can use this simple formula and a very simple torch dotation or TF dotation call to get all possible uh, feature crosses importance. And then uh, it's not good enough because the Hessian matrix uh, is a quadratic complexity with regard to the model parameter. So can we do further better? Yeah, we use a Gaussian Newton matrix to approximate the, the Hessian matrix. Uh, why we can do this is because uh, our model has already been trained to converge. So under this situation, uh, this approximation can be nearly uh, unbiased. So, uh, so finally, we can only uh, compute the, the gradient uh, of loss with, with regard to the, the two single features and the, 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 Haitian, the Haitian matrix of the loss with, with regard to the neural network output and approximate the, 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 the Haitian matrix. Uh, and finally, our algorithm is listed below for each sample and we compute the loss and we compute the, the, the Gaussian Newton matrix and uh, uh, like uh, input it into the second order tele-expansion formula and we can get all possible feature crosses uh, uh, importance. Um, but now we, we, we have to face a, f a problem how to deal with feature redundancy with single features. Yeah, uh, if two feature crosses is important, uh, it may be because the two single features constructed to it uh, is important. So we call it uh, redundant. And if these two single features are not important, but their cross is important, uh, we also don't want to use it because it's unimportant. So we want uh, the, the feature that both important and uh, can provide no information information to our recommender system. So that's our tar next, next target. Uh, so uh, this one, we, we, we analyze it to the uh, uh, scalar theorem proposed in like statistic area. Um, they are do what they are doing is like uh, they model the, 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 the coupler as uh, the joint distribution divided by the, uh, the, in, the, the, the product of independent distribution. So what we are doing here is uh, we, 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 we think the um, the novelty as uh, the the information they pro uh, these two single features uh, can can, uh, can provide additionally after they combine. So what we do is we first redo the assignment of cross feature importance based on their uh, single feature importance, uh, and we assume they are uh, the the cross feature importance is uh, is positive positively correlated with the two single features importance, and get a new cross uh, feature importance matrix. Then we do the uh, we, we divide we we divide the, the real um, cross feature importance so we approximate the in previous section with the expected ones. And if this is very big, then this means the real cross feature importance is beyond our expectation. Then we will choose it for our uh, online serving. Yeah. So after this one, we can select uh, features um, with both novel and important. So our performance, uh, so first one is our offline uh, performance. We have compared it with many uh, previous work like leader proposed by Meta uh, and uh, uh, and uh, like autoface proper by Huawei, this is a, a dust-based method, uh, and it all do uh, outperform the previous method. And uh, as to the uh, uh, complexity, we compare with uh, like traditional feature selection algorithms, and uh, we are the only one that can keep all like a uh, uh, linear linear complexity with regard to the the, the training time, the the training storage, and uh, the evaluation time. So for the online deployment, we deploy our algorithm as a baseline, uh, baseline feature cross selection tools toolbox in our platform. Yeah, uh, um, basically every every feature cross uh, every, every when we when we want to find uh, uh, informative feature crosses, we will use our tools. And on Huawei advertising platform, we select like uh, six features for CTR task and CVR task uh, respectively, and with two different backbone model and get uh, an increase uh, of uh, uh, ECPM uh, of uh, like. Uh, two, uh, two, four, four percent, or and seven percent, and uh, below is our uh, relative uh, improvement in all uh, scenarios of uh, of CVR dataset. Yeah, thank you. And any questions? Uh, thank you for your presentation. Any questions from our audience? Any questions from our audience? No. Uh, uh, um. Uh, hello, uh, thank you for your talk. So uh, I saw that uh, the main contribution of the paper is about feature selection. Yeah. So uh, can I know like uh, how, uh, what is the, uh, the, the recommendation algorithm you use on top of these features to benchmark the, the algorithm? 
uh, so, so to to benchmark the algorithm, you, uh, you mean to benchmark the recommendation results? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, this two, the critical and the data dataset. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, these are two public data set that uh, you can find in almost every like recommendation paper. Uh, yeah, okay. and we also have like uh, this one. This is uh, from our industrial in uh, data set. And it is a multitask uh, uh, data set. So we have three, uh, not multi scene data set, sorry. We have seen three scenarios and uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the average performance. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, uh, I have a question, but mm -hmm. uh, the importance calculation, you, you use the, the, um, the identification as the importance, uh, am I understand right? The uh, activation, the, the number, the value of uh, activation uh, and the, of the loss function. Oh, no, 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 it's, uh, it's uh, the, 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 sensit the sensitivity uh, of the, the loss. second order sensitivity. Yeah, second order sensitivity, because we are dealing with the cross features. Okay, cross. So, yeah, cross features we, we, we care about is interaction. So we use the second order uh, hash matrix. So, and uh, um, such importance will depend on the on the uh, data, I guess. So how so you use the full scale full scale of the data to calculate uh, such importance? Uh, maybe sample is fine. Sample is fine. Yeah, sample is fine. We we, we did the experiment with the sample data set, like uh 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 ten percent. Uh, yeah, yeah, ten percent. Uh, they won't decrease much uh, uh, offline accuracy. Oh. Yeah. So basically, this is very fast. Uh, yeah, oh, and uh, such calculation is uh, different uh, from scenarios to scenarios. The different scenarios will get a different uh, uh, model structure, I guess. Uh, from you mean you mean different, different uh, scenarios, different uh, tasks. Yeah, yeah. So this problems. algorithm is uh, is related with your uh, your 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 models, the model you use, and the task, the data you use. Uh -huh. So basically, it's assumed your neural network already learned the good in interaction between different features, but we want to mine it out and find the important ones for our online serving. That's oh. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and my final question is, uh, yeah. uh, you, you, you do the cross uh, interactions, that you use the one order information, just the, the embedding? Uh, or the mi mixture, or you only use the cross uh, in interactions? As the input, uh, yeah, the yeah, because our core contribution, model. yeah, is is for the effective evaluation of cross features. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think gradient is is used for for single feature selection. Oh, uh, but uh, my my question is that uh, in in your real world uh, implementation, does you use uh, both of the cross destination cross interactions and the. Uh, the single embeddings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I saw a lot of uh, recommender like a uh, uh, open toolbox. Uh, ah. Like either you, they have a module called com com composite, composite feature. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For like, uh, for example, uh, the, the the easy rack, easy uh, rack, uh, easy rack. Yeah, they have a composite. Yeah, if we combine two uh, features, then then it's uh, it's the feature cross. It, yeah. It's, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, oh, okay. Thank you for the talk. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, how do you use uh, this approach in uh, online uh, inference? Oh yeah, this is not uh, for, for online serving. Yeah, this is uh, like uh, we do it offline. For example, we train a model and evaluate it on the, in, in the offline. It won't take, take, take much time because it's very fast and we can find all uh, like uh, top, top six uh, important feature crosses, then we use it for online serving. In fact, uh, uh, from here to online serving, we have two models. The first one, we, we, we evaluate all feature crosses' importance, and the second one, we use it for online. Okay, thank yeah. you. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Uh, I have a question about how to compute the uh, Heisen matrix. Uh, yeah. The method looks uh, it's ever similar to the influence function to oh. compute the importance of uh, uh, features of the samples. So uh, Heisen matrix computation could be ever costly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if there are many, many 
parameters. It could uh, easily so suffer from the out of memory issues. So I wonder to know uh, uh, whether you have suffered from the uh, uh, problems like the out of memory. Uh, okay, uh, this is a very good question. And uh, uh, like for influence function, you use you, you mentioned they use like a diagonal of the the Hessian the, 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 the matrix, and uh, for us this is our this one approximation two, and we use Gaussian Newton matrix to approximate the Hessian matrix. So this this approximation cannot be cannot be used in second order optimization because at that time the model didn't convert to a local optimal or global optimal. But for our setting, we have already trained our model to to convergence. So this is basically an unbiased uh, approximation. We can use the the Gaussian Newton matrix to approximate the Hessian matrix. Uh, and uh, for the Gaussian Newton matrix, we can uh, we just need to compute the gradient and uh, the, the the little Hessian matrix uh, of uh, loss with regard to the output of uh, uh, the neural network. So so this this small Hessian matrix is, is very small, like only two dimension. And uh, the first one is gradient, and the second one is gradient. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Thank you for your presentation. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, now let's uh, next talk okay. is uh, yeah. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. And next talk, uh, Huang Inchu. Yeah. It's oh, okay. It's been. Hello, everyone. My name is Huang Inchu. And uh, this is not the uh, you, you may find the, yes, okay. we exchange the false one and the third one. Yeah. The, the false one, the false one. Oh, yeah. The yeah, 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 okay. You can start. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Huang Yinchou, and today I will share work on uplift modeling in the intelligent marketing conducted by the Chongqing University and Meituan. I will break it down into the four parts. Uplift modeling aims to estimate the potential incremental gains of individuals made under different interventions, and the interventions could be discount or coupons or advertisement. Uh, simply put, the traditional CVR models predict the likelihood of conversing and uplift model they are deeper into how CVR varies and uh, when the advertisements are sure or not. For instance, if you have two users and with the advertisement CVR of 1.8 and 1.1% and the post, post advertisement CVR of 3.6 and 3.5% and only choose one user to uh, get the display in the advertisement, who should we choose? Yeah, absolutely, we should choose the user 2. Even though user 1 has a higher CVR, but the user 2's uplift is higher. And the total you and the total CVR of all users is higher. And this method helps identify the user sensitively to the advertisement, thus optimizing the allocation efficiency. Uh, typically, e commerce company usually follows the two stage process. The first generates the uh, uplift score of each user and then uh, optimizes the allocation under the budget. Existing methods such as a single model and a two model calculate the uplift score uh, through subtraction. Many deep learning methods serve as their fundamental models. However, the first two uh, limitations. First, there are notable absence of uplift modeling uh, through the convenience confounder. Yeah, I'm sorry. For example, when users receive a uh, high-value coupons, the CTR rises, but due to their stringent uh, usage condition, the CTR decreases. Thus, the final CTR CVR is uncertain. Simply, when users see unattractive creatives, the CTR decreases, but upon clicking, the CVR may increase due to the high quantity. The CTR CVR is also uncertain. This is because treatment effects affects the task in the chain differently, and the uplift score in the CTR and the CVR are not entirely consensed. Only focusing on the end task of the chain will lead to the biased results. Yeah. And secondly, on the utilization of treatment, the key of uplift modeling is to capture user behavior changes under various treatments. And common methods involve using attention method for treatment modeling. 
uh, which are victory levels, intervention methods, lacking the flexibility are needed to capture the facial changes on the various treatment. Therefore, our method primarily address the two challenges. We validated the chain bias on the real data by randomly uh, partitioning the data and calculating the actual uplift score in each segment. Uh, we can see that the figure, the CVR uplift were computed on the click set and the CTCVR is computed on the impression set. Uh, from this figure, we can see that the trend in CTCVR and the CVR uplift are not consistent. Ignoring the treatment's impact on preceding task leads to the bias results. To tackle this challenge, we introduce a novel model named eCup, comparison two paths, the ECE net and the TE net. ECE net incorporates task information to better capture user behavior changes across the different tasks. Meanwhile, the TE net achieves adaptive embedding adjustment on the various treatments through the bit level feature interactions. The input of ECE net includes task information and the treatment enhanced embedding, and the treatment has embedding is the output of the TE net. We all tasks share the parameters, which elevate the data sparsity of conversion task. And we inject task information into every layer of the DNN tool through TAE get to ensure the model learns treatment impact on the different task. The TAE get is an MLP with a multi-header attention. Uh, for model training, we use the click and the convincing data for parameters updates. After training, uh, it's treated as a single model and the uplift score are uh, obtained through subtraction. Uh, it's mean in the inference stage, the user features are uh, consist and the treatment feature could be zero or one. And we can get the two independent predict score. And through subtraction, we can get the uplift. The input of TE net is treatment information and other features, and the output is the treatment enhanced embedding. Uh, it consists of two parts, the TAU and the TGET. Uh, for TAU, uh, we use self attention networks to get the natural representation of a feature and get extra treatment features through an MLP. Then perform M and Y's dot product to make the feature different representation on the tra different treatments. However, completely disregarding the original feature may lose some information. So we combine the feature and uh, the original feature and the feature obtained from TAU through TE get with a certain weights. Where the weights are obtained through another TAU with independent parameters. Yeah. And our proposed uh, TE net has two main advantages. The first, a balancing initial and treatment aware embedding, efficiency, adapting feature on the different treatments. And the second, we use a bit level feature interaction to achieve treatment enhanced in a more granular way uh, compared to the vector level methods. <laughs> we test on two datasets where the critical is a public dataset and the empty leaf is released datasets from Meituan. Uh, to eliminate the impact of confounding factors on uplift modeling, we collected it from random uh, controlled trials. The causal graph as shown in this figure. Uh, in it, uh, ensure the uplift score are only by are only influenced by the treatment, eliminate the impact of the user distribution. And our data sets contains rich feature treatments and the label information. Uh, it's suitable for multi-task research such as CTR and severe predictions and uplift modeling. And you can get the data set through the following link. The evaluation metrics for the uplift are AUUC and Chini, aiming to assess the gap between the predict uplift and the actual uplift. We compared our method uh, for CTCVR and the CVR task. Uh, for fair comprising, we conducted uh, two independent models for the all baselines, learning the CTR and the CVR to calculate the uplift of CTCVR task. And the CTR model is trained on the impression set and the CVR model is trained on the click set. It can be seen that our proposed ECAP achieved mostly optimal results. The method like ANU and EFN, uh, which considers treatments interaction modeling, achieved suboptimal results. We constructed four variants to study the effects of each complement, uh, where the second with attention represents use attention method instead of TNET for treatment modeling. It can be observed that with, without ECE net, 
uh, the model's performance is worse because it's trained on the click set and directly applied to the uh, impression scenario, indicating the importance uh, of the entire chain uplift modeling. And we also developed the ECAP on Meituan and conducted a uh, two-week A-B test. From the results, it can be observed that under the same budget condition, ECAP achieves significant improvements uh, in multiple metrics and further shows the effectiveness of the ECAP. In conclusion, we first define and address the chain path problem in uplift modeling and propose the ECAP model to model the conversion funnels, uh, which can be convenient to transfer to other chain uplift modeling scenarios. And finally, we release a large scale unbiased data set for the future research. Yeah, thank you for your attention. <laughs>